Hello there guys. So today, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be doing some time-lapse video stuff using the trigger trap. I'm going to be running around the city today. So let's get started. I want to jump on the subway first because I need to go to my first location. First off, the forever busy People's Square. Okay, so you might be wondering, Craig, why the hell have you come to People's Square considering it is one of the most busiest places in Shanghai? Uh, and I've come simply because it is the most busiest. Um, because I'm doing time-lapse stuff, I actually want a lot of dynamic movement and you actually get that here in spades because I've only been here a couple of minutes. I've seen probably a good 200 people. There's a whole group of people that are going to be coming upstairs behind me as it is. Uh, I've already been offered a sexy lady massage three times and I've been here five minutes. And what I'm actually looking for is to get a large um, span, like a large crop, where you actually see a lot of people moving through. I mean, you can see here. That is a good 50, 75 people just as is. And the spot that I'm actually scouted at was a bit of an issue <laughs> because here we've got a whole bunch of tents which are actually poking up because I've never been to this place before. I think I've been here once before. So I literally did come here as a scouting mission to see if I can find a location to shoot. Uh, and I have found it, but unfortunately I've had to have gone quite high. I'm actually at the top of the stairs here. Um, but that's actually not too bad. I'm more concerned with making sure I don't get the top of the tents in because this is kind of like the whole circle. This People Square is like a huge park area. And um, a lot of subway stations all meet here at the same time. That's why this is crazy, crazy busy in the morning for work because people are from all over Shanghai. Like this is the hub kind of area and then from there people go out. And within this spot here, I think I'll try and show you here. There's one exit there, one up there, there's one over there and there's one there. And you'll just see a buttload of people come out of that one and go to this one. And then a buttload of people from this one go into that one. So I'm going to be, I'm going to actually try and see if I can line up a shot here and frame it for the time lapse. Uh, I'll talk about what the time lapse is and what I'm wanting to do with it and the, the gear that I brought with me throughout the video. Um, but first, I want to get this shot set up and to actually see if there is a shot here with these tents. And if not, then I've got to walk around and see if I can find another location. Okay, while the camera's running, I'll talk to you about the shot here. I'll put a picture up here on screen. This is basically the crop that I'm going for right now. Uh, it doesn't completely work, but it works enough for my purposes right now because I'm really just doing test shots. I'm really just testing, going to locations and seeing what we can actually shoot. Um, let's just talk about the gear quickly that we've got up here. I'm of course using the um, trigger track cables uh, and the shots are like F4, I think, uh, and at like 13th of a second or something like that. Uh, I've got the little stopper in just to kind of drag the exposure out because we want these people to be blurry. We want lots of motion when people are coming through. We don't want them to be like staccato moving across the frame. We want them to be kind of smooth, like a constant trail of people. And that's what I'm actually doing here. Uh, and it seems to be okay so far. Um, we're gonna have to definitely wait and see. I've only done 50. 50 frames so far uh, but that was just kind of messing around for the first 20 or so because I actually messed up a couple of seconds and the frame was a bit too dark um, but this is the first location of the day I'm gonna probably jump around to a few different places around here uh, but the problem is if you go down to this area that area down there where all the people are um, you got lots of people basically trying to snag for tourists uh, I've already had one guy trying to do a tea scam on me, but as soon as I told him I live in Shanghai, I know what he's doing, he promptly moved away. Um, actually, I may do a video about what pranks they try and pull here in Shanghai, but for now, I'm just going to let this shot run and see if I can actually get anything. And if not, well, actually, even if, uh, I'm probably going to walk around and see if there's any other places to kind of shoot around. What I'm looking for is a lot of uh, movement. Because one thing I don't like about being in Shanghai uh, is I can only really shoot on weekends and when weekends are when weekends are on uh, people are everywhere so why not shoot the people 
in, in a not mean way, but like use that to your advantage, make it an actual time lapse, show a time lapse with lots of movement. Uh, and that's kind of what I've been wanting to do with a time lapse, is kind of show the daily migration, that's kind of my uh, working title for it, is the amount of people that just come in and out and through Shanghai on a daily basis. Um, so that's really what I'm kind of trying to aim for. Uh, I'm gonna get back to actually checking this all works, uh, and there's a ton of people coming around, so I'm gonna put you guys down, all right? All right, so I'm trying to pick between two different options right now because I've just realized it's actually past three o'clock right now. And uh, the sun actually sets in Shanghai at about five now, uh, just because it's winter essentially now. And uh, it just gets dark a lot earlier. And uh, I want to make sure I get to a couple of different locations today. Uh, and the second reason is I've been approached of, uh, about getting, taking a picture with some tourists and then maybe having some tea like three or four times already now and it's frustrating as hell because I live here I know all your bullshit scams so I just want to go away and take my pictures but every corner every time I stand still I get offered lady massages and all this other bullshit so I'm actually really in the mindset of just going somewhere else right now because uh, I found one location for it I'm gonna walk around maybe for another five minutes and jump on the subway or something because I need to get out of here this place is annoying the hell out of me Okay, so against my better judgment, I have come to an even busier place right now. I've come to a place called Lu Jiao's Way. You've actually seen me come here before to do the, um, the skyline stuff of Shanghai, and this is where it's at. Uh, and unfortunately, it is packed with people. I've come here before to shoot, and it's just been way too busy. But that's what I want today. I want lots of people, I want lots of movement, because that's what I'm trying to figure out. So, I need to figure out how to get out of here. And I've already got a shot in mind, and a location, and a framing, and everything. So I just need to get there, and hopefully there's people, and I can shoot, and I can get there in the right spot. So, let's hope for the best. Okay, so there definitely seems to be enough people here, but not as much as before, which is good, because uh, I'm trying to walk and talk at the same time. It's not easy. But um, I've been here before on public holidays and it's been manic, busy. Way too many people can't move. Right now, it's a normal weekend. It looks busy enough, but it's definitely enough space to shoot. Now, I want to try and get that guy in the frame somehow. So it's going to be somewhere around there. I need to figure it out. Let's get walking and see if I can find my frame. <laughs> So this is probably the most claustrophobic I have ever felt when shooting pictures. I am surrounded, surrounded by people, but I wonder if we can show on screen here. It's going to by the show, but I'll put it up on screen here. We've got the Pearl Tower and then big walkway, blurry people coming by. I'm hoping it's going to work. Uh, it's already four o'clock. I've spent an hour walking around trying to find the shot. It's been an absolute pain in the arse. I might have it. I'm amazed I haven't been kicked out because there are so many people here, but I've managed to squeeze myself against the ledge here with the little tripod. So I'm going to shoot away here, try and, try and get this. Might move to another spot and then I definitely need to go back one more location this afternoon. Sunset stuff and then I'm done for the day. Way too crammed. Okay, so I'm doing one last shot. I've kind of, I was down there before and I've moved up the walkway to kind of this whole intersection thing. And I've got 40 shots left and then I need to switch out to a new memory card. I realize I haven't actually talked much about the shots themselves, but really this is just testing stuff. Really not much to it. But um, hold on, I'll see if I can show you guys here. I'll put a shot on screen here so you can see. What it actually looks like and it's actually pretty cool the building's more in the center i liked it when it was on the right but this might work just as well um, but i've got a few shots left and then i need to run last location of the day okay so i've decided to actually stay here because i'm loving the light the way that it's bouncing off the footpath here and bouncing off all the people and the buildings really amazing fortunately my 32 gig card filled up so I'm using a 16 and it's giving me some weird issues 
It's the exact same card, but a 16 gig version, but it's completely packing out. <laughs> the buffer just completely fills up after a while. So I'm having to mess around, constantly reformat because I'm losing the images. I'm desperate to try and actually get something good and worthwhile here because it's such good light. I don't want to walk away uh, empty handed here today because this is premium, premium quality stuff that I'm getting here for the time lapse. But seems to be holding up. Uh, I was actually using my old iPhone to trigger the trigger trap, but uh, unfortunately that iPhone's packed up as well. So everything is dying all at once on me right now. Uh, I actually turned off the two second image review uh, and that actually seemed to have really done it here. And now that I'm talking to a camera, everybody is hanging around me, but no one is walking by the camera. So I'm gonna have to shut this off until that. There you go. See, it's actually buffering. You actually hear it's busy. It's actually coming up busy. And I don't know what's going on. Um, I've got a couple of seconds worth of stuff, but this is getting really frustrating now because it's not going to work very well. All right, I'm going to have to see how I go with this. Okay, another quick update since I've actually just changed a couple of things. Um, I've just increased the shutter speed actually to give it more drag, so uh, the people are a lot more blurry, uh, but you get a lot more movement out of it. And in return, I've actually increased the, uh, the duration between the, the shots. So it's actually two seconds rather than, I think I had it at like 1.2 seconds before. So I've just changed it to two seconds. And it's amazing how many people are actually looking at me when I'm doing this stuff. There's so many people around, it's amazing. But um, doing those two things, changing the shutter speed to kind of make it a little bit longer, and then increasing the time between the shutters themselves by a little bit, seems to have done the trick. It seems to actually be firing off fine, um, but I need to be, heading home soon because it is getting late but I want to definitely capitalize on this really cool light right out here all right one last shot of the day and this one is a doozy I love this shot I'll put it up on screen here, but we've got the sun setting, bouncing back, giving all this really cool light. I'm doing a super long shutter, like fourth of a second kind of thing, because I got my little stopper on to kind of drag that shutter out. And we've got all the traffic going, so it's gonna be nice and smooth moving. We've got the sun setting the background. So happy with this shot. I'm really happy, because earlier today, it was a little bit nerve wracking. When I got to this spot, I was a little nervous. I didn't know what I was gonna get. And uh, with all these people around, it can be a little bit nerve wracking. Uh, even just bringing out the camera to shoot, let alone bringing out the video camera. So, um, a little bit about what I've got since I'm actually here. I'm at 2.8, uh, cause most of the stuff's gonna be blurry and the stuff that is gonna be in focus will be in focus at 2.8 uh, with all this stuff. Uh, it's pretty easy, uh, especially with uh, long exposure stuff and kind of like time-lapse stuff in general. If you're having motion, um, just concentrate on the things that you want sharp. So it's generally something still. That's why I actually focused up on the little planter area down there. So the 2.8, uh, ISO uh, 160, because I'm kind of messing around with that to get the, uh, the darkness values, because I want that long shutter. So if my aperture is set at 2.8, my shutter speed is set long so I can get car drag. The only other thing I can uh, mess with is the ISO. So I'm messing around with the ISO and I put it at 160 and that seems to be about right. And um, with the trigger trap itself, it's at two seconds uh, and that seems to be good enough because the traffic's not super fast, it's kind of slow, so it does work for two seconds. But uh, with that sun setting down there, it's a great shot. I'll put another one up here on screen, but um, very, very happy with that. Uh, after this, I am gonna have to pack up and go, I think, because the sun will be gone, and then um, I might try and do night trails, maybe? Uh, I might move around somewhere else and actually do, uh, like, car lights, you know, like long exposure car light stuff. Uh, I did some of that stuff a while back, actually, a couple of months ago, and it turned out great. So um, I might do it here, actually, because the whole traffic system's quite cool looking. But yeah, very happy with, uh, with how this shot is. Right, so you know that street I was photographing before? Well, I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> I actually figured I might try and do some time-lapse stuff down here. 
and that also means I can kind of wait here for when um, it gets nighttime and then I can do like the car streaks kind of things but in time-lapse mode um, you know you kind of have the streaky lights but then it's like movement kind of thing it's kind of it's pretty cool actually but um, I figured I might actually come down and have a look and maybe even try and do some time-lapse stuff on the ground here so I'm gonna put you guys down grab my bag real quick and see if there's anything that I can actually shoot here that will be uh, worth time-lapsing Okay, so I've set it up again, pretty much the exact same, at last time, exact same as last time. Let me get my words out. Uh, it's a two second space in between the shutters. Uh, it's a uh, 0.5 of a second now, so it's a lot, it's a, basically a drag, because you're so close to these cars here, they're gonna be a cool blur. And that was, I very nearly filmed an accident there. <laughs> China. Again, it's F2.8. Um, just focused in on that. Actually, I want to just double check my focus on that one because I'm not sure where my focus is at. But, um, yeah, I should actually be focused on the Pearl Tower and it's not. So, it's a good thing I thought about that. So, let's do that in real time. In live view, go to my magnification thing. it there done okay now uh, actually I'm just gonna put you guys in front of the camera just so I have a mark from when actually to start the time-lapse because the other ones will be blurry uh, it's a good little trick that actually I'll talk to you about that in a sec once I've set this off All right. so that trick I just did there um, uh, I do it sometimes when you're doing brackets or panos actually it works quite well so say um, you're just playing around and you're going, oh yeah, okay, click, click, I think that's gonna work. Plop your tripod down. And what I would normally do is put my hand in front of the camera and take a shot. And what that basically helps you do is when you're reviewing your images uh, in whatever program you're using, you can then remember, okay, so the actual proper pano images start from after the hand. Uh, and another cool trick is once it's finished, put your hand at the end of it so then you can basically have a, a little bracket buffer of each of your shots so you can do multiple passes through and just have your hand in front of each set your hand at the beginning and the end of each set and then that way you can have a really good marker but I am watching multiple accidents very close to happening right now it is amazing <laughs> I feel like I should be having the camera running just in case I need to capture this stuff but um, I've got what 64 shots left um, so I'm near it. Wow, that is metallic blue. And I thought my car was shiny. Okay, so I've made up my mind. I'm just going to be I'm actually just using the Trigger Trap app here because it's actually just easier to trigger the camera with that since it's still connected. Um, I'm just going to shoot a whole bunch of uh, Star Trail things. Not Star Trail. Uh, car light trails, I guess. Uh, I haven't got any filters on it because I'm shooting the F16 because uh, that is uh, just what I ended up doing because it's actually this lens is actually really sharp at F16 so what I'm doing at 50 ISO and I'm just shooting a whole bunch of different I'm just keep pushing the shutter whatever the camera says my exposure time needs to be it's gone from like 8 seconds to 10 seconds to now 13 seconds I'm just pushing the button a whole bunch of times to see what I get uh, I could probably then merge a whole bunch of different light trails together uh, I'm getting a couple of cool things, but after this, I'm going to go home because uh, I'm really exhausted at this point. So I think I'm I actually, let's just end it here because uh, I'm really tired. I'm not going to be here much longer and then I'm going to go home. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, it was a really interesting day uh, for me, at least, because um, at least I know a little a bit more about the locations I want to go to now. I know the kind of places, the angles and things like that. I've been to this location a couple of times before on my own, but I've never really thought about um, where I could shoot from and get cool angles for time lapse. And I've definitely found that today. Um, it's a shame I didn't get to go to the third location, which is actually uh, the other side of the water, shooting this way and seeing the skyline. Uh, I've done a, an old vlog about that actually. I'll put a link down below to that one. It was called like um, 
shooting long exposures in Shanghai or something like that. I can't remember what it was. But um, that was a cool vlog. Um, I was quite happy with the results I got from that. Uh, I was planning on going back to that location, but as I said, I didn't get a chance to because the light here was so cool with the sunset. So um, I guess I better uh, close it out now. So hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll catch you in the next one.